Hello and welcome to this One Thing, a daily video devotional coming to you from First Presbyterian Church of Fort Lauderdale. And together we'll be looking at one text and choosing one thing for you to consider. And, and we hope that you find this a thought-provoking, encouraging part of your day. In college, I, I got a job working in the kitchen of a small restaurant that, that served what I would call high-end bar food. It was uh, nothing fancy, but I think that what we made, we made well. Uh, and, and one morning I can remember coming into work and, and seeing on the, the prep sheet for the day that I needed to prepare uh, the tomato and basil mixture that would go on our bruschetta. Now, now we would mix uh, up cut tomato and garlic and herbs and ahead of time so, so that when an order came in that we'd, we'd simply grill some bread and then it would be topped with a scoop of that tomato and basil mixture and, and then out it would go to the table. <clears throat> and so I, I, I mixed up about 12 quarts of, of it. That's, that's about three gallons. I, I diced the tomatoes and, and, uh, and, and mixed it all up with, with the herbs and, and I tasted it and, and I decided it needed salt. And so I, I seasoned it with salt uh, and, and until it tasted like I, I thought it should and put the top on the container and, and put it into the cooler uh, to be used later that day. Now, when, when later that day came and the, the first order for bruschetta came in, I took out that three gallon container of tomatoes uh, to find essentially cold tomato soup. It was about half filled with mushy tomato and the other half with tomato water. And this was the day when I learned that, that when you add salt to raw tomatoes, it causes their cellular walls to deflate, releasing uh, moisture, which, which is great if that's what you want to have happen, uh, which is not what we wanted to have happen. And for that reason, the recipe called for us to salt the dish right before serving it, right before it went out the door, not when we mixed it. The tomatoes needed salt, but the order in which we added it mattered. Our scripture today comes from the book of Joshua in the Old Testament and, and, and its second chapter, and it's the story of Rahab. In the story, two spies are sent by Joshua, the leader of the Israelites, into the town of Jericho that they are planning to invade. The scripture says that they entered the house of a prostitute named Rahab. The king of Jericho hears that there are spies in the city, and he sends soldiers to find them. And, and Rahab successfully hides the two men and, and, and keeps them safe. She tells them, I will keep you safe and help you escape if you can guarantee the safety of my family and me. But before she makes this deal, this, this deal that will ultimately save her family and save her life, she says this in verses 9 through 11. Listen, she says, I know that the Lord has given you the land and that dread, the dread of you has fallen on us and that all the inhabitants of the land melt in fear before you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea before you when you came out of Egypt. Continuing in verse 11, she says, as soon as we heard it, our hearts failed. There was no courage left in any of us because of you. The Lord your God is indeed God in heaven above and on earth below. The Lord your God is indeed God in heaven above and on earth below. Now, if you haven't listened to, to Friday's devotional, uh, I'd recommend that you go and, and do that because... Um, it, 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 this really follows very care closely to, to that devotional, and I'll, I'll put the link down below. But in Friday's devotional, we, we examine Romans chapter 10, when Paul writes to the Romans about the role of confessing and believing as a part of salvation. And he's writing to the nation of Israel, uh, telling them that, that they will not be saved or justified by, by following the law. It, what he wants them to understand is, is that they can't work out their salvation. In, in other words, that we, that we aren't justified 
That is, that we aren't made right with God by our actions, but rather that we must first confess and believe and allow that belief to compel us in the way that we live our lives. And here in the story of Rahab, we, we see that exactly. Rahab confesses. She says, the Lord your God is indeed God in heaven above and on earth below. Rahab first believes, confesses, and it compels her to action. That, that order mattered. That order mattered. Rahab's actions are born out of the knowledge of who God is, and that leads her to salvation. And here's the one thing. The order still matters. If we attempt to live a righteous life out of, out of some desire to save ourselves, our motives are corrupt. It becomes about us, right? But if we live our lives out of the truth that Rahab confesses, that God is God in heaven above and earth below, if we live out of the truth of who God is and what God has done in Jesus Christ, we will, like Rahab, find our salvation. Friends, the order matters. Be safe. Be well. We'll see you tomorrow.